are going away, the shy-eyed Colleens and the lads so straight and tall, from the purple peaks of Kerry and from the crags of Wild Imol, from the greening glens of Antrim and the hills of Donegal, they carry with them a teardrop in the eye, and their days went uncomforted, their nights an endless sigh. Some travel east and some traveled west, and their cabins stand all deserted now in the land they loved the best. Yet they win a golden store in the land they travel to, but no foreign skies will hold beauty like the rainy skies they knew. Their fields are now the strangers, or strangers' cattle wail, and Ireland will long remember the passing of the gale. There's an old Irish saying, inside every old man, there's a young man wondering what the hell happened. Well, I can tell you what happened to me, growing up on the poor streets of Northern Ireland when there was no work and immigration was a promise of a better life for a young teenager. But as my grand always said, to hell with poverty, throw another spud in the soup. But our mother Elsie had different plans for the family. We somehow scraped up the assisted passage and decided to emigrate to Canada, hopefully to start a better life. We were a music family, and soon halls around Toronto were ringing with our da's, jigs and reels, and the family singing the old Irish songs. I was transforming myself into a Canadian teenager at high school. And I soon became a wannabe James Dean in a car club with an old customized car, girls and rock and roll. My father's music was fading to a new drum beat. No more diddly diddly music for me. Rock and roll was all the rage. But then, I heard the rhythm of the tropics in Belafonte's Banana Boat song. Calypso music started filling the airwaves, so... Day -oh. Goodbye, old Ireland, and hand me my steel drum and maracas, for I would become a calypso singer. Mon. So I cut short the halls of learning at Mimico High School, and with my new Calypso Cues group, we started a never-to-be-forgotten adventure when the lights of Young Street in the 60s beckoned. It was party time every night. Come on, girls, limbo, limbo, under my limbo bar. Mm. My hard-working parents were alarmed at what they saw as some tropic fever affecting the brain of their eldest son. Now, I was never the one to do things half measure. So while mother worked like a slave on factory assembly lines, I played the clubs and partied all night, and the Trinidad rum flowed in a steady torrent. The music of Trinidad, I was sure, was now embedded in my soul. I lived and breathed it. I even developed a silly Caribbean accent, a cross between mid-Atlantic Irish and a drunk Calypsonian. My long dreamed Treasure Island was calling me. So, there was nothing left to do but live there among it all, and got the fare to some mystical island in the sun. I lived with some Trinidadian friends in San Fernando and became a white Irish stranger in paradise. Then began the steady disappearance of that young, hopeful Irish immigrant. Months went by, and the only thoughts of home were the envelopes that came now and then with a few hard-earned dollars from my mother. Well, the story is full of music and fun, and a few tears as well. It's a roller coaster of growing and searching, with a surprising ending 
when that Irish banana boat finally docks. Somehow, I survived those tropical escapades when I discovered there was no treasure on Treasure Island. The strong pull of old Ireland, like many before me, was calling me home. So, I formed a Celtic folk group called the Irish Rovers. And they took me dad's music out of the kitchen and introduced it to audiences around the world. So the 